And Please finally, don't tell me Elden Ring is going to get nominated in Game of the Year. I'm not a member, has selected the following six games as nominees for Game following of the Year at games. the Game Awards 2024. The Game of the Year nominees are Astrobot from Team Asobi, Bellatro Bellatro Game of the Year? Black Myth Wukong Black Myth Wukong? by Game Science. Elden Ring oh, Shadow no. of the Earth Tree by From Software. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth from Square Enix, and Metaphor Refantasio from Studio Zero. Oh, hell no. So there you have it. Social media are going to be absolutely livid right now. Because Elder Ring has been nominated for this year's Game of the Year. What the f***? What is up everybody, AJ here back again with another video. So I'll be checking out the nominees for the 2024 edition of the Game Awards. Now, I already said this earlier on that the moment a certain DLC has been nominated in this year's Game of the Year, social media are going to be absolutely pissed off and I was freaking right because as of this very moment a lot of people are legit upset they are legit pissed off simply because of the fact that for the uh, past 10 years this is the very first time that a DLC has been nominated for this year's the game awards and from and from their perspective, it is a it's a bad thing, but we'll talk about uh, uh, about um, the game of the year nomination once we get my it. So, without further ado, I'm gonna be checking out each of these um, categories, and I'm gonna be doing a prediction where which what which game is going to win which category, and which one I think should win, or should I say my personal take on which game should win which category so before i proceed i'll be very real with you all i have absolutely no idea this esports thing and i have absolutely no idea who are these content creator of the year so i'll be skipping these four categories so we're gonna be starting things off with the most anticipated game so Start things off with the most anticipated game. Uh, hello? There. Okay. Most anticipated game. This one, 1000% 1, is gonna go to Grand Theft Auto. I'll be real with you. Grand Theft Auto is gonna win this, and Grand Theft Auto should win this. Granted, there, there are people looking forward to Death Stranding 2, there are people looking forward to Ghost of Yote, and there are people looking forward to Monster Hunter Worlds, but if you put any game over Grand Theft Auto, the thing is, Grand Theft Auto 6 is here, GT6 is, is here, and as a matter of fact, GTA 6 is one of the most anticipated game of all time, even amongst... Uh, so among the uh, among the, uh, the word of mouth, so this one there's there's no debate without shout out without that. GTA 6 is winning this, and G and personally, I feel like GTA 6 should win this. So no arguments there. Next, best adaptation. Ooh. this one. Uh, Personally, I have, I cannot comment any of, of this because I haven't watched any of these adaptations of a game. But I do hear good things about Arcane and Fallout, so I'm I'm guessing that it is gonna be a toss up between either Arcane or Fallout. Uh, just I'm just for best adaptation, I'm just guessing okay? because I have no personal comment on any of these five um, game adaptations so I'm going to go with the wild guess it's, it could be either Arcane or Fallout simply because um, from the from the word of mouth, word of mouth it's, it's either Arcane or Fallout so 
That's wow. Uh, that's that. Next, <laughs> best multiplayer. Who? I have a gut feeling that, despite the fact that the 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 negativity that Hell Divers Two has received, simply because of what Sony did with the with the region lock thing where you are required to log in the to this game using a PSN account even though your this game is available on PC from my understand you cannot deny the fact that Hell Divers 2 is probably one of the best multiplayer games that um, that this game has had so far I mean out, Call of Duty is probably good Jamboree is probably good Tekken 8 probably good Warhammer probably good but I feel like the one game that deserves to win best multiplayer and I think should win best multiplayer is Hell Divers 2 so best multiplayer Hell Divers 2 is gonna win and Hell I feel like Hell Divers 2 is should win because during lo people had during launch there was, there was a lot of um, positive feedback regarding regarding the gameplay of the game despite the uh, even though Sony kind of messed up the PS the the PSN kind of messed up messed up the game in terms of uh, the we, one must require a PSN account to log in still we, we cannot deny the fact that Hell Devils 2 is the best multiplayer game of 2024 best sports racing Can I skip this? <laughs> Can I just skip this? Actually, because I have no idea which game is gonna uh, which sports rating stands out the most. Like, I have absolutely no idea. If I, you know what, I'll, I'll just make a wild guess. I'm gonna go with um, EA Sports FC 25. I, I I have zero attachment. I have you no know, to these any 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 sports games in general. Even though. I watch, uh, I watch wrestling um, to this day, ever since the uh, last year. But I, I simply don't have, don't have zero, have zero faith when it comes to um, visual concept or 2K making a wrestling game. I feel like THQ makes a better, better wrestling game in general. Uh, just take me back to the good old days when THQ make those good old wrestling games back 20 years ago. But anyhow, regardless, I, I'm just I'm just gonna get I'm gonna go with a wild guess on this one. I'm gonna say Esports FC twenty five is gonna win best sports uh, racing. Next, best sim strategy. Ugh. Hmm. This is another category that I have absolutely zero zero knowledge. The, the, another category I'm not gonna have to go with a wild guess. And as a matter of fact, the only the only game that I do know of is Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess. This is the only the game that I that I do know of. I mean, I do heard of Age of Mythology we told thanks to the the present the presentation that I've been watching throughout this entire year. Uh, but to be real, if I would. Um, this for best team strategy. I'm just gonna go with another wild guess. I'm gonna go with um, Unicorn Overlord. I don't know, man, because this, this I feel like Unicorn Overlord stands out the most among the the among the five of it. Even though I am, I personally know Kunisno Kunisugami the most. I have a gut feeling that Unicorn Overlord is gonna win best sim strategy. And again, this is just my uh, me guessing. Next, best family or oh, Astro Boss definitely winning this without a shadow without. Astro Bot is definitely winning this, and Astro Bot should win this. I mean, don't get me wrong. The, there, are these other four Nintendo games. Rather, wait, I believe the three. I believe all three are the 
all four of them, all four of them are from Nintendo, if I'm correct, if I'm not mistaken. At least these three of them are from Nintendo. I mean, no comment on Prison Speech. Jamboree looks like uh, it's fun. I I heard good things about Zelda as well. No comment on uh, Plucky Squire, but let's be real, man. Astrobot is definitely winning best family. Family. I mean, and as a matter of fact, Astrobot should win this because Astrobot is one of the highest rated game um, for 2024. Therefore, Astrobot is definitely winning best family, and Astrobot should win this. No arguments for best family. Astrobot is winning best family 1000%. Best fighting. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. I'll be real. All five are good. All five are good. But let let I mean Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is good. Versus Rising is good. Uh, the Marvel versus Capcom Fighting Collection Arcade Classics is good. Multi versus. I mean, I, I do hear good stuff, but let's be real. Let's be freaking real. The, the, among the five games that's in here, I feel like the one that deserves to win best fighting game the most, Tekken 8. <laughs> there's, there's no way Tekken is not winning. Yes. I mean, I, do, I did so one tweet that from Justin Wong, aka The Wrestler. He was like, hear me out. If Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection wins best fighting, the possibility of we getting a, a Marvel vs. Capcom 4 is higher. I solid argument, solid argument. But then again, from the perspective of the media high mind, they're gonna go with which one is the most uh, that has the most word of mouth which is most likely Tekken 8 I mean granted a lot of people let's, n let's not deny the fact that a lot of people love Marvel vs Capcom Fighting Collection but the thing is that from the perspective of the media hive mind they are gonna go with Tekken 8 1000% and I feel like Tekken 8 should win best fighting so Tekken 8 is gonna win this, and Tekken 8 should win best fighting. But I'll be real, if any other games like Sparking Zero or Versus Rising or Marvel vs. Capcom and Fighting Collection wins best fighting, I'm 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 not mad. I'm not mad. I mean, as a matter of fact, these games deserve to win best fighting, but the one game that deserves to win the most is Tekken 8. Just my personal thoughts. Next! Best RPG. <laughs> oh, 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 gosh. Oh, gosh. This one up will be you. To me, I feel like this is a. It's, this is kind of a tough one because this year is the year of JRPG games. I kid you not. And as a matter of fact, right, it's kind of sad that other RPG games like Persona 3 Reload, Grand Blue uh, Fantasy Reeling, didn't make it into this uh, list. But then again, I'm pretty sure these five games are the, the highest rated uh, in, in, in terms of score so far. So it's kind of unfortunate that other RPG games that are that are legit good didn't make it into best RPG but but I will say this I will say this this is a toss up up between Rebirth and Metaphor it depends on which game that the media hive mind resonates more they are gonna go more with the action RPG or they're gonna go, they're gonna go more of the old school turn-based RPG. So they so from from the perspective of the media high mind is they either gonna go with Rebirth 
or metaphor. Personally, which game I think should win? I have no attachment to metaphor to be real, so personally I'm gonna go with um, Rebirth. Simply because I played um, the OG FF7 with, uh, before, before. So, and as a matter of fact, right, FF7 Rebirth has the most word of mouth on social media. And as a matter of fact, right, a lot of a lot of people have been wanting, they have chosen FF7 Rebirth as their game of the year. So I'm not mad if um, FF7 Rebirth wins game of the year, but we'll talk about game of the year once you reach a category. But from the perspective of the media hive mind, it's, it's a toss up between Rebirth or Metaphor. But personally, I'm gonna go with Rebirth. It's kind of unfortunate. If it's any other year, that uh, if it's any other year, like a dragon is gonna win this. But against the likes of Rebirth and Metaphor, nah. I hate to pick it to you. Like a dragon is not gonna win this. Best action adventure. Oh man. Uh, for the best action adventure game, combining combat with travels and puzzle solving, I have a gut feeling that Astro Ball is gonna win this one as well. As much as I really, really love the way that Bloober Team, the way they how they remake Silent Hill 2, I have a gut feeling that Astro Ball is gonna win this. And Personally, is a is a mix up between Astrobot and Silent Hill 2. But first, but to be real, if it were if I were to choose one of these two games, so sorry Silent Hill 2, but I have to go with Astrobot. <laughs> As the Astrobot just stands out more the most. So I I'm guessing that Astrobot is gonna win. Best Action Adventure and Astrobot should win Best Action Adventure. Next, Best Action Game. Ooh, <laughs> okay. For the best game in the action genre, focused primarily on combat. The irony is that. In this character, in this Vex action game, there's practically three shooter games and two somewhat action RPG games. Personally, I love Celebrate, and as a matter of fact, I I'm still waiting for the day uh, uh, for that the PC version will be available. But to be frank, from the perspective of the media hive mind. Black Myth Wukong is winning best action game. Be because among the five games over here, the, the most word of mouth uh, is is Black Myth Wukong. A lot of people have been praising Black, Black Myth Wukong. Therefore, from the way I see it, Black Myth Wukong is, is winning this. But, but personally, I feel like I know, I know, I don't think Stellar Blade is gonna win this, but I feel like Stellar Blade should win best action game. <laughs> it's a hot take. I, it's just, it's just a me thing, okay? I, I, I love Stellar, even though I've never played Stellar Blade, but I really want to play Stellar Blade, and I really want to check out Stellar Blade. So I'm just waiting for the day that Stellar Blade gets a PC version. But on a serious note, Black Blade Wukong is winning uh, best action game. Best VR AR. Uh, I feel like the one game. Mm, personally, I I cannot comment on which one which game should win, but among the five, I'm gonna wait. I'm just gonna pick up another wild guess, but I have a gut feeling that 
Batman Arkham Shadow is gonna waste best uh, best VR AR. I'm just this one is just a wild guess, but I feel I feel like that Batman Arkham Shadow resonates the most. I don't know, man. I, I feel like Batman is feeling best VR AR. I I have no um, I can't personally comment on this be best on this category, but I feel like Batman Arkham Shadow is gonna win this one. Just this, this is just uh, a wild guess. Best mobile game. Oh crap. Oh dear lord. Here's the thing. The the fact that an indie game happens to be a mobile game and as a matter of fact like a large role for my understand for an indie game has quite a lot of nominations. But which other nomination that it got uh, other than best mobile game, we will jump right into it later. Personally, and um, at least I'm, I'm just glad that Woodering Raves and Zenless Zone Zero is getting nominated, which means it's getting its recognition as they deserve. But, and personally, I really wish um, Zenless Zone Zero wins best mobile game because I'll, I'll be real with you guys I had legit tons load of fun playing Zelda Zone Zero even though I was I played Zelda Zone Zero on the PC most of the time you cannot deny I will not deny let's not deny that Zelda Zone Zero is a legit fun game with the with the, with the way how uh, they, they present the game but from the perspective of the media hive mind Bellatro is winning this. Uh, as much as I would love for Zelda Zone Zero to win best mobile game, I have a gut feeling Bellatro is winning this from the perspective of the media hive mind. Considering the fact that Bellatro has like what five, about five nominations if I remember correctly, and as even and as, and as, as a matter of fact, right, Bellatro is technically an in, yeah, Bellatro is an indie game. So, and for an indie game to have five nominations, that's pretty wild. So, from the perspective of the media hive mind, I have a gut. It is very high likely that Bellatro is winning best mobile game. Uh, as much as and personally, I really wish Zelda Zone Zero is winning this, but I have a gut feeling Bellatro is winning this. And on a side note. For those of you who are wondering why Genshin is not in here, or why Hoi or Hong or why Hongkai Star Rail is not in here, hey, they've already been nominated for the past few years already. So, just just let a new Hoiverse game get nominated for once, okay? Genshin and Hongkai Star Rail already had their had their glorious moment. They had their their uh, their chance. So, give a new game a chance already, okay? Please. And as a matter of fact, right, if, I know, if I'm not mistaken, um, Hokkaid Star Rail recently won best on going, going game for the Google Apps application? Google, Google App Awards, I'm not really sure, but hey, at least Hokkaid Star Rail won something in another, in another award show, so that's that. So, once again, Personally, I want Zelda Zone Zero to win this, but from the perspective of the media hive mind, Bellatro is winning this. Best debut indie game. Okay, so here's the thing: the indie game section has two categories, which are best uh, best independent game and best debut indie game. So. From the perspective of the media high mind, it could go both ways. Either Animal Well wins best debut indie game, and Bellatro wins best independent game, or Bellatro snacks both debut indie game and best independent game. It's either one of uh, it's either one of these two. So, but personally, I feel like. Animal Well should get its own uh, recognition as well, so 
for best debut indie game, Animal Well should win this. Well, for best independent game, Bellatro uh, should win this. So best, so it's like I said, it's a it, it could go both ways. Either Animal Well wins best debut indie game, while best independent game Bellatro snags it, or Bellatro snags both debut indie game and independent game. So. Yeah, best in, like I said, best independent game. I have a gut feeling that Bellatro is winning this, even though I heard a lot of good stuff about uh, UFO 50. But from what I understand, UFO 50 is practically a collection of like what, 50 games? I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not really into indie games, I'm reviewing you guys, but I do know from, uh, from social media that the, the two indie games that stands out the most are Animal Well and Bellatro. And obviously, obviously Bellatro because... Um, M I, w I was watching a, uh, a stream from Emily, who, who, is the, who, who is Clara from Hokai Star Rail. Um, from what I understand, right, um, Howard Wong, who is Luca, who is Luca from Hokai Star Rail, he has a very... He, and uh, he plays Bellatro like a lot. And I mean a lot from what from what she said. So long story short, best Bellatro is best means best independent game and Bellatro I feel like best, um Bellatro should win best independent game. Even though I have, don't really have any connection with the, any of these five games to be with you guys. Next Best community support. Oh hell no, Hell Divers 2 is not winning this one for sure. Considering the fact that how how Sony messed up the messed up this game, so there's there's absolutely no way in hell Hell Divers is winning this. So, uh, and as a matter of fact, I'm kind of surprised that No Man's Sky has been nominated. I don't know. I, I noticed that both FF14 and No Man's Sky got nominated quite a number of. Times, but I don't know, man. This one is. I'm gonna take another wild guess for this one. This is ID, but then Borders Gate 3. Uh, the, there's a lot of word of mouth for Borders, Borders Gate 3, but then again, that was last year. So this year, I don't really hear much about Borders Gate 3, but I feel like Fortnite is winning this. Just this is this is this is another wild guess from me, but I'm I'm guessing Fortnite is winning best community support, and I believe the next one is what best ongoing game. Yeah, I was right, best ongoing game. Listen. This one I'm gonna this is gonna be another wild guess for me, but I'm gonna I'm just gonna guess uh, I mean Hell's Hell is the best is good but I don't know. I, I, you know what I'm just gonna go with a with a wild guess. Is is it gonna be a toss up between either Fortnite or Hell Divers 2? It's either one of these two. But which one but if I were to choose choose which one? I'm gonna go with Hell Divers 2. Personally, I'll, I'll, I'll choose Hell, Di Hell Divers 2. Even though I don't really have any attachment to any of these five years, I feel like Hell Divers 2 should win best ongoing. If not Hell Divers 2, then it should be Fortnite. Games for Impact. Oh man, this one is another one. Uh, another one I have absolutely no. No comment, no idea, though, but I did hear, I did do hear good stuff about Tales of Kenzera, though. So this one is, is another wild guess. I'm gonna go with Tales of um, Kenzera. Next, innovation in accessibility. Uh, 
This is another one that I have absolutely no freaking idea. Uh, mm. If I were to pick one, I think I'll go with Prince of Persia. This is just a this is just a wild guess. Yeah, I'm. This is just a I'm going in blind. I'm thinking a wild guess that Prince of Persia is winning this. Next, best performance. Oh man, Aries Aries voice actress and um, James voice actor. Oh god. I'm so sorry, Brianna, but I'm, I'm, I'm personally I'm gonna go with Luke, and I feel like Luke, sh Luke, Luke should win best performance because, dude, his performance as James, James like, dude, he went hell with James, like I, I'm, I'm gonna kidding you. I mean, as a matter of fact, right, he did get nominated in the Golden Joystick Awards as well. So, as much as I have a huge respect towards uh, Brianna over here, I'll, I'll be, I'll be real, I'll be very real. Personally, I'm, I, I have a gut feeling that Luke Roberts is gonna win Best Performance, and Luke should win Best Performance. Best audio design. Uh, 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 best audio design. The one I can't really comment and on on Hellblade Two though, but the one game that really stands out among these five is Silent Hill Two. For for best audio design, I can't I, I can't really comment on well from the perspective of the media hive mind which game are they are they gonna choose? But personally, I think Silent Hill Two is gonna win this. So for best audio design, I'm gonna go with um, Silent Hill Two. Because on, on on a personal take, on a on a personal take, Silent Hill Two is is winning this. Best score and music. Oh man, jeez. This is the one category that I wish Persona 3 Reload is nominated. But against the likes of Astro Board, Rebirth, Metaphor, Silent Hill 2, and Stellar Blade, it's kind of unfortunate that Persona 3 Reload didn't get nominated in. Uh, it didn't get nominated in best score music. It's kind of unfortunate, but then again, these five games deserve to be in the best score music as well. As well, regardless, the one game that is going to win best score in music and should win best score in music, Rebirth. Rebirth is winning uh, best score in music 1000%. You cannot deny the fact, the amount of effort that the composer, I believe Hamazu was one of the composers. It's not, it's not Nobuo, it's not Nobuo with a shout out now. I don't think Nobuo is in charge of, um, uh, of the music for Rebirth. He might have a hand a little bit, but I, uh, if I, if I remember correctly, Hamazu was the one in charge of the, Music. Hold on, let me just uh, have look back at the uh, uh, FF7 rebirth on this. On let me check the wiki just to double confirm. Uh, yeah. For rebirth, there are there there are two composers which are Amazu Masashi, uh, Amazu Masashi San and Suzuki Mitsuto San. Uh, there's no link to Suzuki Mitsuto San, but Hamaosi. Amaozu Masashi-san is best known for his work on, uh, I believe on, yeah, he's best known for his work on FF13. Now, hear me out. 
I I I know a lot of you people out there. They are, they're gonna they're gonna be trash talking about um, FF13 in general, but you cannot deny the fact that FF13 has great music. I mean, dude, the battle music in FF13 is a banger. So the fact that Hamazu San is in charge of of the music, and he and one other the what. Uh, Suzuki san, these two guys, they went in ham on the music in FF7 Rebirth. Yeah, Rebirth is winning best score in music without a shout out. Now. But then again, to be real, J- um, Japanese composers in game composers is in general. Here's what I noticed: they have, regardless of how popular the game is. They have a tendency to go all in ham on the music. I mean, as a matter of fact, right? Even Metaphor Re Fantasy is 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 made in Japan, but still, the among the five games that has been nominated for best score in music, the one game that's that stands out the most in terms of score and music, Rebirth. Therefore, Rebirth is winning best score in music, and Rebirth should win best score in music. But don't get me wrong; all these five five games that has been nominated here have uh, have great music. But the one game that stands out the most is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, without a shadow of a doubt. Best art direction. For outstanding creative and or technical achievement in artistic design and animation. Uh, hmm. Best art direction. I feel like this is just a gut feeling, but I feel like Wukong is winning best art direction. Just my personal thoughts. I feel like Wukong is winning this. In terms of art direction, the one that really stands out the most. Is Wukong so for best art direction? I feel like Wukong is winning this. Next, best narrative. Okay, ah, yeah, yeah. this 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 category. This one is a key. this one is a clear winner. This one, there's only one game that's de- that's definitely winning this. Come on, man. There's absolutely no way Silent Hill 2 is not winning best narrative. There's no goddamn way. Silent Hill 2 has probably one of the best storytelling among, even though it's it's a remake of the OG Silent Hill 2. The fact that but you cannot understand the fact that the storytelling in Silent Hill 2 is my is holy mother OG. Therefore, I mean, and, and as a matter of fact, like, dude, FF7 Rebirth is a best narrative, what, what in the blue hell, man? Dude, what the, what in the fuck? Anyway, long story short, Silent Hill 2 is going to win best narrative, and I feel like Silent Hill 2 is, is, should win best narrative. No questions asked. Next. Best Game Direction Awarded for Outstanding Creative Vision and Innovation in Game Direction and Design Okay, this one is kind of a tough one I'll reveal I mean, as a matter of fact, right? <laughs> Here's another thing that I, I, I noticed The nomination for Best it's literally the same. <laughs> you know what? Let's not talk about game of the, the nominations for game of the year. Okay, let's not talk about that. But for guess best game direction, mm, I think I'm gonna go with this one. Is just another wild guess, but I feel like Rebirth is um, winning this one. I feel like Rebirth. Is winning best game direction and comes the game of the year category. Now, here's the thing that I want to highlight among the six 
games here, to be very freaking honest, there's only one game that does not deserve to be in this category. And it is the very reason that so there's people on social media are going are, are pissed off. Elden Ring DLC. So here's the thing. A DLC is basically an expansion of a base game or a full game. And a D and in order to play uh that that respective DLC or an expansion, one must require a base game in order to gain access or to play that particular DLC or expansion. So and as a matter of fact, right, for the past 10 game awards, there has never been a, a DLC being nominated for Game of the Year. I mean, granted, there are remake games being nominated uh, for Game of the Year, but that hasn't been established ever since, like, what, 2019 when the Resident Evil 2 was nominated as Game of the Year, and people were okay with it because even though a remake game is technically a remake from an original uh, game from like what 20 to 30 years ago it is still considered a full game or a base game therefore the eligibility is there why in the blue hell is a, a dlc or an expansion pack getting nominated in this year's game of the year it's practically saying that Elden Ring in general gets nominated for Game of the Year twice. Now I will give credit where credit is due. Elden Ring DLC Shadow of the Earth Tree is a great DLC. But the fact that that it is a DLC still retains. And and as a matter of fact, right? For a DLC to win Game of the Year? That sounds so wrong on so many levels. And as a matter of fact, right? If a DLC in general wins Game of the Year, it's a spit in the face to every single other full games that has been nominated out there. And those investors slash executives that, that they are watching this Game Award, they're gonna plant the seeds on those um, those developers where, you know what, let's not bother making a full game. Let's make more deals. Let's make more deals. Uh, let's make more uh, a full game in the form of DLC instead. Which, which to me will have a very negative impact on the gaming industry. Therefore, personally, I feel like Elden Ring DLC does not deserve to be nominated in Game of the Year. Then just this is just my personal thoughts. It doesn't deserve, uh, deserve to be in the Game of the Year. I'll, once again, I will give credit where credit is due. Elden Ring Shadow of the Tree is a great DLC game, but it does not deserve to be in this category, because to me, a base game or a full game are o are only allowed to be eligible for Game of the Year. If and as a, if you want your yeah, Elden Ring DLC to win something, you might as well create a best DLC category or something like that. You know what? As a matter of fact, right? You if you if they want Elden Ring DLC to win so freaking bad, you know what? Just make a best DLC category and put other four nominations, four other DLC as nomination, and let Elden Ring DLC, and everyone is happy. Therefore. Once again, I just don't think Elden Ring is deserves to be in this um, Game of the Year nomination. Simply because of the fact that it is a DLC. DLC. It's not a full game. It is just basically an expansion of, of a full game, which is Elden Ring. I mean, as a matter of fact, right, those investors as slash executives out there, they do keep they do keep an eye on this the Game Awards. Otherwise, 
why why in the blue hell there's a lot of huge shooter announcement for the past like what two freaking years is because back in 2016 overwatch won game of the year and for those of you who didn't know overwatch is practically a hero shooter game so overwatch winning game of the year prompted kind of prompted those um, investors slash executives to make more hero shooter games that eventually fail and here's another thing that i've been noticing as of lately there has been a rise on a lot of souls games as well and the reason for being is that elden ring won game of the year two years ago i'm not saying elden ring doesn't deserve to win um game of the year two years ago but the the, the effect that the fact that Elden Ring won Game of the Year in 2022 is probably the reason why there's a a, a slight increase on Souls slight increase on Souls games as of lately. So therefore, if Eld this is purely my speculation, my speculation, if Elden Ring DLC wins Game of the Year. I won't be surprised that there's going to be more full game in the form of DLC, which will have a very negative impact on the gaming industry. Like, like I said, that's not my thought process on the Elden Ring DLC situation. Anyway, back to who I think is going to win this year's game of the year. From the perspective of the media hive mind, I've this is a I'll be really. This is a definitely a toss-up between Elden Ring and Rebirth because the media high mind they are into from sub game is in general, but I'm pretty sure some of the media high mind out there are gonna be like, hold on a second, why in why is uh, Elden Ring being nominated again? And if I choose. Uh, Elden Ring, does that does that mean Elden Ring wins Game of the Year again? So, yeah. Which, therefore, this is definitely a toss up between Elden Ring and uh, FS7 Rebirth. But personally, I don't think Elden Ring should win Game of the Year because if there's a category that Elden Ring DLC deserve, it should be best DLC. And not Game of the Year. And which game I feel like should win Game of the Year? If Elden Ring is not in this in this nomination, it's a toss-up between Astrobot, Rebirth, and Metaphor. And personally, I would pick Astrobot because of this game brought a lot of other companies, kind of united uh, other companies together where the amount of easter eggs that, that they did was mind-blowing they, they had easter eggs of uh, from capcom games they have easter eggs from konami games they even have easter eggs from playstation 5 playstation exclusive games so yeah that's that's a very cool thing as a matter of fact i mean a lot of people had fun with, with astro board so personally i feel like astro board should win game of the year but then again, majority of the of the people they chose Rebirth to be this year's game of the year. And as a matter of fact, I don't mind Rebirth winning game of the year, but first but then again, personally I feel like Astrobot should win. But then again, to be real, if any of these other five games, like uh, any of these five games, Astrobot, Palacho, Black Myth Wukong, Rebirth or metaphor winning game of the year i ain't mad i'm not mad i'm, I'm just glad that they, they because they deserve it this these five these five games i feel like they they deserve it but Lacho maybe might not win but i don't might not win game of the year like with wukong maybe i'm not really, i'm not really sure but then again uh, there's a lot of um High praise and word of on, on, and word of mouth regarding this game, despite the fact, in terms of um, critics, it, it got a, the lowest score among the five 
but still, I would rather have any of these five games to win game of the year than this this DLC winning game of the year to be with you guys. Which game is winning game of the year? From the perspective of the media, I, I mind it might be a toss up between either of these two, Elden Ring or and and the Rebirth. If Rebirth winning this, I, I'm I'm happy. But if Elden Ring is winning game of the year, it's gonna have a huge people are gonna be pissed. And it's gonna have a negative impact on the gaming players. So I think that's pretty much my comment on uh, on the nominations for the 2024 edition of the Game Awards. Comment down below what are your thoughts on uh, the nominees for this year's um, the Game Awards, and which game should win um, Game of the Year, and which game should be nominated. Leave a comment down below. And if you guys like this up, I do appreciate a thumbs up on this video. Anyway, I will definitely will be watching the the game awards on December 12th without a shout out without. So do look forward to that. And as a matter of fact, right, I really this is just wishful thinking. I really hope that this the the, the media high mind, these journalists, they make the right decision by choosing the right games to win this year's game of the year anyway my, my name is aj have a good one and i will see you all in the next video